Hello friends, this is Scott, and today's video is about paver patios. This is not going to be a how-to video. Um, I didn't, when I did these patios, I wasn't filming very much. So I'm just going through some old photos and I'm going to show you kind of the process and discuss a few of the things that you need to know when you're doing paver patios. But obviously not a how-to, so that's not where we're going to get out of this. So I just want to show what paver patios can do for a normal size backyard and how it can give you so much more comfortable living space and, and, and leisure space than just having grass throughout your yard. Now, 20 years ago when we bought our house, the backyard consisted of totally grass, had one little, maybe a 12 by 12 uh, garden space that was bare dirt, and it had four flowering pear trees on our top terrace, and then we have a bottom terrace and uh, the only thing in our yard was a trampoline and four Alberta spruce. So that was it. So everything that's happened to this yard is I've changed and modified and, you know, over the last 20 years. Well, the trampoline and the four Alberta spruces are gone. Uh, so all that remains is our four flowering pear trees, which are getting huge. They provide a lot of shade for the house. And I built my patios, my paver patios around the, these trees. So they're a staple to the yard and a very necessary component. Now here's the only photo I could find of part of the last of my paver patio area that was covered in grass and the chickens would always come up and take advantage of eating the bugs and the and eating the grass. Um, but the thing about having grass instead of like concrete or a patio is you, you know and when the weather's bad and it's muddy or messy you don't tend to want to walk on it. When you have pets they're pooping on the grass and so you always have to watch where you're stepping. So by putting in paver patios, it kind of defines more living space as well as, uh, you know, the chickens will still poop on the patio when I let them out, but the dog definitely doesn't, and that's a that's an added bonus. Again, this is not a how-to video, but I want to give you some, some things to think about um, when you're doing a paver patio. Now, if you were to hire this type of job out, you see this size of patio here, um, you'd be spending, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. You'd probably be around six grand, I would think, for this. I did it myself for under $2,000. Um, so if you do it yourself, you're willing to put in the hard work, uh, you can definitely, you know, save yourself maybe, you know, two-thirds of the cost. But understand, this is, you have to do a paper patio correctly. If you don't do it correctly, you're going to end up with all kinds of, you know, weather-related uh, pavers moving around and, and lumpy and, and just it won't look good for very long. So there's some, some several considerations that you need to know uh, when you're doing a paver patio, and I'm going to, I'll get into some of those. The first consideration I had to take into account was what to do with the sprinkler line. Uh, the sprinkler line used to run right down the middle of this yard. All it did was water grass and trees. So I had to uh, reroute the sprinklers and I put them on bubblers so that they, they water the perimeter, which I turned into planting beds. So that wasn't a very big, big project, but it uh, didn't cost much. It took uh, you know, a few hours to do, but uh, not a big deal. Digging the trenches was the biggest issue here. The second consideration is you've got to remove a bunch of dirt. You need to dig down about eight inches. And what are you going to do with all this dirt? Now, being a gardener, I, I found places I could put the dirt, but you know, there was a lot of dirt there eight inches down. The reason you're doing eight inches, you need four inches of gravel, two inches of sand, and then the, the depth of the pavers themselves. So it's approximately seven and three quarters to eight inches. The next consideration is you've got to plan for a slope away from your house. Now, the general rule is, with a patio, you want it to slope away from your house about a quarter inch for every foot of the length of the patio. So you just have to measure out how far your patio is going to be, and then you know you drop it by a quarter inch for each of those feet, and then you start you run a bunch of lines and strings that show you kind of where that angle is with stakes. Now I didn't take any good photos of those because I wasn't documenting things when I was building this patio, um, but always remember slope is important. You don't want water pooling. And you definitely don't want it sloping back towards your house. Next consideration is, is you need to bring in a whole bunch of raw materials. You need to bring in gravel, equivalent of four inches deep, and sand, equivalent of one to two inches deep. And you need to bring in all your pavers, whatever types of pavers you want to put in. So a lot of runs to Home Depot um, and a lot of hauling of materials and it, it wears on you. You know, the older I get, it's tougher for me to do paper patios because it's just too hard on the body. 
really good at math and can calculate how much material you're going to need, uh, you could get this material delivered by one of the local box stores, but I'm not that smart. So I just did it as I went and they just kept getting more and kept getting more. And once I got closer to being done, I knew how much more I needed to get of each of the items or each of the materials. The tools I used in this project were, was not, were not extensive. I used a, a flat nose spade. I used a, a eight pound tamper. I used a level and I used, you know, two by fours and just a lot of elbow grease uh, to get this patio done. So you don't need a lot of tools. I did need a, a saw to cut some of the bricks down if, on a few of the smaller areas, but they, they sell both, you know, the, the full size and half size generally of each type of brick, so you don't have to do a lot of cutting. Once you have your eight inches of dirt dug out and your lines drawn for the proper grade, it's time to go to Home Depot or one of the box stores and, and get bags of gravel. Now, you can have gravel dumped by a truckload, but I just find that to be too big of a hassle because it forces you to move all the material or you're parking your cars in the street because you got to put the gravel in your driveway. So I prefer not to do that. So I would just go to Home Depot and I would just load up the carts for what my truck could handle, half ton pickup, and I would just bring it here. So the first step is to get four inches of gravel down and pack it down hard with a with eight pound uh, tamper. So it's a lot of physical labor, but you want to get that so it's uh, very, very compressed. You can get machines to help you uh, pack down gravel, but I was low budget. I just did it all by hand. A little hard to see, but I put furring strips in that are at the, at the right height so that when the pavers sit on top of them, that they'll it'll line up just a little bit higher than the adjacent concrete because it will settle a little bit, but the better you tamp it down, the less settling. But the big thing for those furring strips is I do it every six feet because I'm using an eight foot two by four as, as straight as I can find. And that's what I use to screen the sand. So you need two inches of packed sand on, on, on top of the gravel to lay your bricks on. So you pack, you bring in your sand, you pack it down, you screen it with the, with the board, you pack it down some more, you screen it with the board until you have it lined up with, with where the, when you put a paver down, it'll line up with the uh, edge of the concrete. Again, it's taken a lot of hauling, a lot of carrying heavy weights, and a lot of pounding of materials to get it to where it needs to be. Now, here's a picture of kind of showing you the process. You kind of do it as you go. You do a little bit of hauling, you do some packing, you do some stacking of bricks, lining them up, and then you just keep, may do a few rows, and then you just keep marching forth. Because you're going to end up standing in, in areas that you need totally compacted and flat, so you have to redo stuff. So it is what it is, but it, uh, this gives you this view kind of gives you a look at uh, the various aspects of the process. Now you do stagger your seams, so you always put a big brick, small brick, and then the next row, small brick, big brick, or however you want to do your pattern just to make sure that you're, uh, you're not lining everything up as you want your seams to be staggered. Once you have all your brick in place, then it's time to put some edging in. As you can see, a little bit of black edging around the trees and things. And then, I didn't take good pictures of this, but you get just sand. And you take a broom and you just sweep the sand in the cracks. And then you wet it down, you get a hose out, you spray it all down, you get more sand. You, you, know, you fill all the cracks with sand. That's what locks your patio in. and locks all your pavers together so that you have a solid patio. I'm so happy I decided to put in paver patios. The quality of life in my backyard is so much improved. I spend so much more time creating a new living area that's the defined living area. You're not just dragging picnic tables and chairs on grass. You know, you have an area that you know is supposed to be for your entertainment. You can have large parties. Uh, you can grow things. You can have fire pits. You know, you can, again, put your picnic tables or whatever, benches. Uh, whatever you'd want to put. And then you can always edge it with, with beautiful flowers and plants and vegetables and miscellaneous things. So uh, I get much more use of my outside now that I have this, uh, these paper patios all done. The benefit of paper patios is when fall comes, it's kind of fun just to blow the leaves off the patio. Very easy to, to clean the patio. And as I use the kind of the back deed and gardening method, I just blow all the leaves in my flower beds. And then in the spring, I pick them up and use them whatever has not been rotted in. So, so again, it's just a, 
really easy to keep it tidy just with a with just a blower and uh, makes it just quick work of uh, fall leaves. But my favorite thing about paver patios is the fire pit. I spend so much time outside now just relaxing and enjoying uh, the set space that I've created with this uh, with this particular part of my patio and really got a lot of use out of it over the last three years. And when winter hits, I come out here and I wipe the snow off the chairs and scoop myself a little path. And as I'm walking here, you see Mr. Lincoln running run around playing in the background, but I'm getting ready to knock this snow off my fire pit because, hey, this is the perfect time for a fire pit. As long as we don't have a no burn day, uh, sitting in the snow with a nice fire is a, is a very relaxing thing to do. So anyway, think about a paver patio in your yard. If you've got extra space and you wanted to find more living space and, and enjoy your yard more, I highly recommend uh, putting in a paver patio. Thank you for watching this video.